the number one show I know that we all agree on. Let's break the bank with X Lurk and Dion. Yo, welcome back to another episode of the Break the Bank podcast. This is your boy Lurk. As always, I'm with my guys X and Dion. We got a lot of shit to cover today. But first things first, what's good, my guys? How's everything? Did, did, him, anybody, did anybody see KD's debut with the Suns? Uh, like the Hornets? Man. Yeah, I mean, yo, listen. Granted, it's the Hornets. But just watching him be able to seamlessly fit in, he wasn't forcing it. The only thing I say is that it looked like Book was trying to force, like, the ball to him a lot at times to make sure that like, he got him involved. Yeah. But... He wasn't really forcing no shots. He played within the offense. Everything came smooth. It's only one game, but 23, I would points, argue, on, 23 points on 66%. He had two blocks. I think that's going to be the most important thing is what he brings to them defensively. KD might be the most malleable player in the league because it's like he does what he does. Yeah. It doesn't matter what your scheme is. It doesn't matter like KD is going to do what KD does. Honestly, for them, the only thing that matters is fucking keep Chris Paul and bubble wrap into the playoffs because he's the kind of point guard. He's not who he used to be. He's not a walking bucket, but he'll be able to get KD, get book, get eight in the ball in the right places and just let them do what they do. They just need to make sure he's healthy because if he suffers a, a, a setback or he's injured and can't go, then I, I don't I don't you know. I think it's it's funny. Like it's that. funny you bring that up. Do you think he could survive the playoffs? Because that's a whole different grind from the regular season. Even if he makes it to the playoffs completely, I healthy. do. I do because he, that, there's that's, no that's expectation for him to score. But like, you know oh my fault. My question oh, for you is going to be: survive and they win, or he just survives? Because like, both, both. Well, he'll survive. When I say survive, it's like they go on a they go on a long run, possibly winning even a championship. They're, they're the four seed right sweep. Now, right? It's not like they yeah. It's not like they're going to sweep everybody they play. They're the and four seed right now, right? Either four or three. One of the two. Four. They're not no. ahead of the Kings. So no, they're, they're, they're not that high. I want to say that they're like, I want to say like fifth or six. I and think they're, they're three think losses they're back of the three seed. And I think they're like, they're only two games up from like the eighth or ninth seed. They're the fourth seed. They're the fourth seed. They're a game and a half ahead of the Warriors for the uh, at the fifth seed. He will survive all five games of that series and then he'll get to go home. I can't believe we fed into the fucking <laughs> Yo, we're late. He, he was the fucking the ball ball walking us the entire fucking for this time. Shit. And our stupid asses are looking at the fucking standings all for the Warriors. You know what? Well done. Yeah, this one. He'll, right. yeah, he'll survive all five games of that series. We good in the West. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been playing well. You you got you guys beating the Clippers tomorrow? Uh yeah, I think so. We good in the West. We good in the West. I mean, we'll we'll I mean, get into that more later in the episode, but I was just no. Nah, I was I was wondering, like, you watched the Suns Hornets game? I'm yeah, assuming. early. I, I saw most of it. Did uh did Miles Bridges and John Morant suit up for the Hornets or? <laughs> Yo, what's good with your boy John Morant? <laughs> what, the, I know that's your guy. I know that's one of your favorite players in the league, bro. But he's wilding. This is the this is a, another incident that we're hearing about that. He's threatening lives or there's guns involved. Like, and apparently this whole situation, like, granted, his mom's called him. This is a little different. We could get into the details in a second. I know you're going, you're going, I know you love to play devil's advocate in these situations before you condemn somebody to hell. But apparently this is just a few days. I believe they said four days before the incident that we talked about a few months ago where he, he assaulted a teenager reportedly. Right. Well, they added details to that one. I didn't get to see the whole article. <laughs> no, yeah. The, oh, article, yeah. They said that he yeah. came back out with the gun, right? Like, yeah, in his waistband, to be fair. Yeah, only yeah. In his waistband. But still. <laughs> yeah, this, so this is where, this is where, like, as a That's podcast, like, this is where, as a podcast, like, I feel like we can separate ourselves from other podcasts given our backgrounds i'm truly concerned about this dude i know i joke a lot like i really do know i joke a lot about him and like how he wants a rico more than a larry o'brien and i do feel that way <laughs> like i do feel like he he wants a rico really badly but like 
I'm actually concerned. Like, I, I, this isn't going to end well. Like, this type of behavior, like, X, I seen you tweet something out about YouTubers and how they, like, they want to joke with everybody and one day they're going to joke with the wrong person. And Jaws playing a game right now. And one of these days, he's going to play that game with the wrong person. And it's not going to be a fucking 17 year old kid. You know and what I mean? You don't even realize it's like, even like, bro, if you in the car with somebody or somebody you with makes a stupid decision and lets their gun off and that person dies, bro, you can get charges and accessory to murder. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and then all the money in the world can only help you to a point. You feel me? So yeah. it's just like, yeah, it's concerning because it's like, bro, he should have people in his circle who keep him separate separate from all that shit you know what i'm saying keep him insulated it's like bro he could take a lot of people out the hood and really change a lot of people's lives and set a lot of people up for a very long time and all he got to do is just keep being cool and keep being him but he's involved in dumb shit and it's like it's so unnecessary and like you know even the like, shit even the shit with the at the mall right like granted his mom's called him and told him whatever right now that's different that's mom dukes but you could have easily sent those nine people that they said you was with instead of you going all the way over there. Turning but she got to know, too. No, 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 yeah, she she no. also has responsibility for that, too. Nah, let me ask you all a serious question. What is his mom doing in finish line? <laughs> bro, what, <laughs> bro, what was she going to accomplish in finish line, bro? Like, why was she there? She got to know, too. It's it's everybody. Like I understand, like like if my mom calls me, it don't matter what's going on. You're gonna pick up and you're gonna react based on what she did. And and I'm not I'm not even necessarily mad at his action, but it's like everyone. It's not just him. It's everyone that's around you needs to know what's at stake here. Why the fuck is she at finish line? <laughs> at finish line in what? Where they're in Indiana? It wasn't even like they're in Memphis. And bro, there should be somebody that you call for situations like that. That's not. The fuck that's what I'm saying, like cash cow themselves. Why, like, and that's the thing is, like, bro, and why would you set your son up for that? Like, that's what I'm saying. It's just bad. It's just yeah, bad. And, and I don't even think he's wrong for reacting the way he did. I just think that he got to be smarter in that situation because he c- continues to expose himself in ways that is either going to hurt his career or end his life. The second one, like. <laughs> The like, second one's the one I'm concerned about more so than like. I mean, I, like, yeah, clearly, clearly, his life is more important. But it's like he he just got to be smarter. He's really bugging out. And even if the shit that we end up hearing about, even if it's not him directly, it's the people that's the like right in his inner circle, and he's present at the time. But like, let let's say someone from Jaws Circle. And I don't want to do like I don't want to put anything on them, but like the story about in Indiana where they're pointing lasers at people, right? Yeah. Let's say one of them pulled the trigger. It doesn't matter if Ja wasn't the one that pulled the trigger. He could have not been there. He could have been in Memphis. Now it's someone you're associated with, you know, pulled the trigger on some on a different group of people. So now it's war between the two groups, hypothetically, right? Like there's so many layers to this. And it, it, it just, like, yeah, he's at fault. There's so many different people at fault. But, like, you're headed down a path that only ends one way. And, unfortunately, like, I mean, I, I texted you on a group chat. Like, I think bro's going to end up in a box, like, at this point. And I I can live without John Moran in the NBA. I can live without anybody in the NBA. Like, I don't get too attached to any player, really. But, like, it would kill me. LeBron's probably the most hated player I've ever met. Him and I went to war four straight years, personally. He doesn't know that, but we personally <laughs> went to war. If something bad happened to LeBron, uh, I wouldn't like that shit. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want nothing bad to happen to Ja. Like, I don't really care about Ja the Hooper, but Ja the person, like, the shit he's doing, bro, this shit not cool. I'm with you. Speaking, speaking of um, the Memphis Grizzlies and bad decisions, did y'all see Dylan Brooks' outfit yesterday? I'm starting to become a Dylan Brooks guy. Uh, I have to admit. What? I have to, I have to admit. Like, uh, this team's a character and a facade, and his character is pretty harmless. <laughs> like, all things considered. Like, ja, <laughs> the shit John's doing, 
And then you just had all it is Dylan Brooks dressed up like Stone Cold Steve Austin and accidentally kicked Donovan Mitchell in the balls. Like that's really not that bad if you compare it to what Jaws do. <laughs> you right, I guess. I mean, <laughs> I'm starting Gary, to be on Gary, this Pay- side. Gary Payton might have a different argument, but yeah, he would. But again, I'm sure Gary Payton would rather have that happen than have a bunch of lasers pointing at him. This is true. I'm pretty sure anybody would. <laughs> yeah, like, like what Dylan Brooks does. Like, if you're gonna but play a character between character Dylan not Brooks and Kyle Kuzma, I miss the David Stern days where everybody was dressing in suits. Is he dressed up as Stone Cold, man. Nah, I guess, if that's what you intentionally. Want. I know I that's think what so. the meme was. I don't know if he did that intentionally because I don't know. I thought you know it was what? intentional. It was kind of cool to me. I ain't gonna lie. I mean, I would have preferred to see him with a shirt on, obviously, but I don't like the Pistons. It's so, just fake, bro. If they just hooped, like just hoop. John make two hundred fifty m's to dribble. Dylan Brooks make eleven mil to dribble. You don't need to dress up as a wrestler. You don't need to point lasers at people. Just hoop. One of the most fun teams in the. They are way too much fun for us to sit up here and talk about how much we don't like them. A team we shouldn't like. like. You're right. You're right. A team we shouldn't like, based off the way they play, is the Mavs. Like that's a team. Like that's a team that plays like shit. That that's just not fun. To, but like everybody likes them. No, you're right. Luca's Luca's the teddy bear that drinks hookah and or smokes hookah and drinks beer before the game. Yeah. No, it's it's, a, it's really an unwatchable. He's shaped like a oh. quarter peloton. It's crazy. So relax, bro. Relax. <laughs> you know what I'm saying my overhand right is more pre peloton, pre peloton. Come on. Yeah, it, it, but that it's an unwatchable brand, but everybody watches it because Luke is fun loving, and and it doesn't even matter. They have that fucking narcissist Kyrie on the team. We're still gonna watch because of Luca. Yo, bro, he's he, really, yo, he's been taking shots at your team left and right. No, no, I'm just. I mean, you speaking, saying. you speaking, you speaking, you speaking truth, but. Well, I've said it on Twitter, like, honestly, I can't even watch the Mavs now. Like, I watch them, but the emotion is detached. Like, I'm not as invested because I really just can't fucking stand Kyrie. And it's just ugly basketball. But, like, all the shit that I used to talk about, Scott Brooks, Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, just unwatchable basketball, we got the same shit going on in fucking Dallas. We got a coach that's, did y'all see Jason Kidd's coach? He said, yo, I'm watching just like the rest of y'all. I'm like, I feel him. Like nah, Bill, you know Come you on, can't coach man. Kyrie and Luca. Come on, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I feel him. <laughs> Bro, he just out there, when they say they want to come out, he's the one that chooses someone else to go. <laughs> That's all Jason Kidd do. Yeah, he's just subbing people in. He just subbing so, people in, bro. That's the they call him I, remember, I wrote an article when we hired him, like, yo, this motherfucker's a black cloud. Like, yo, he's he's awful. Bad broken process, bad coach, and that yeah, they murdered me. Now, what, wasn't you happy? Wasn't you happy last year? No, I don't know. I was what? So we. You was, well, happy, we got, you was happy last year. It was mostly because we got a defensive coordinator, and he really had he had us playing a scheme that allowed us to kind of play small but still be good defensively. But bro, Kittish is out there for the vibe. He doesn't call offense. Literally, we have offensive coordinator and a defense coordinator. He doesn't do shit other than just substitute, just like Dion said. It, but here's your only offensive play. Luca and Kyrie be at the top. Facts. That's it. <laughs> That's it. ISO. Yeah. I I pick and roll and make and if that don't work, yeah. do another pick and roll. It maybe. might be you might get you might see one of these every once in a while. When that one doesn't work. That's it, bro. That's all y'all do for 48 oh, minutes. It's unwatchable. <laughs> it, it's it's dis- disgusting. It's disgusting basketball. It's, disgusting. It, it, it's it's James Harden Rockets all over again. But it's worse because there's two. Yeah. Yeah. It's worse because there's two of them. Like, it's no different than what they were doing when Luca was by himself. But it's something about, like, it doesn't work with Luca, so I'm going to pass to Kyrie and magically is it just going to start working? Like, nah, bro. It's just just not how basketball works. So, how you feeling about Russ with the Clippers? They've lost three in a row since they've got them. Yeah. Is anybody but, surprised that? It but he hasn't. Play? He hasn't been completely horrible. Awful. I'm telling you, we it's good bad. in the West. Everyone, we good in the West. Every everyone doing it to themselves. We good in the West. Yeah. So X, you had them as title contenders, and you said you wasn't backing down the last time we spoke about it. 
Now, what's what's the kind of change in my mind? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm getting. <laughs> that's what I was getting at. <laughs> yeah. Uh I might have to walk back that take. Um you know, now, it's crazy because he 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 does everything they need, but then he'll make a stupid ass pass and turn the ball over or force up a stupid ass shot. And then he's doing it in clutch clutch time. Like if I don't know if you, it, it, I don't know if y'all watched the game the other day. It wasn't really worth watching, but there was nothing else for me to watch. And he he was doing all right. He's clearly not gonna bring nothing on to the table on defense, but he he was doing all right. He was he was making good decisions, and then he just started doing. He didn't even play most of the fourth quarter. As soon as they bring him, they made a good run. They brought the game within single digits. Russ get on the court, start doing dumb shit. Everything's out of sync. They lose the game by like nine or ten points. Bro, he's too easy to bait. Like the 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 best thing for the opposing defense is for him to hit his first jump shot. Because once he does, it's green light the rest of the fucking game. He's like, Yo, I'm pulling up from wherever. You know what I'm saying? And then the crunch time is like, Yo, we're just gonna play off you. His ego is gonna be like, oh, where the fuck you? I'm gonna pull this jump shot. They're gonna break. You know what I'm saying? And Dion, so you I, could double check this, but if I'm not mistaken, Ty Lu's been like steadily decreasing his minutes since his first game like he's, he's, he's like still, yo like you he's still card because we need a point guard but we're gonna do what we gotta do to stay in the game he he's still closing though that's my thing like i don't hate russ uh if you told me russ's minutes were like end of the first quarter to the middle of the second end of the third and then he keeps you afloat until Kawhi and pg come in in the fourth i kind of love that uh but if he's closing, he doesn't really keep you afloat though. Uh, he's been playing well, but he does. He he's not at that with level. Some of, where with he some can of these teams, more. with some of these teams, I'm gonna use the Nuggets, the Warriors, and the Clippers as an example, specifically Jokic, Steph, uh, PG, Kawhi. When I refer to keeping the team afloat, if you can lose those non minutes by ten or less. You just stay the flow. Okay. Like that's how good. All right. Yeah. All right. That makes sense because, like, I'm not saying he wins the minutes, but he would lose the minutes in a better way than Bones Highland would. All right. No. Yeah. Okay. I get it. Cause yesterday they was getting cooked pretty much the whole game until that was like first like eight to ten, like yeah, about like eight minutes of the fourth quarter when Russ was on the bench. Yeah. No. You. You can like. I mean, I'm a real sicko, but, like, I can pinpoint games when it's, like, yo, this team's going to come back, and then I live bet it. Like, bro, I made so much money when Wiseman would check in for Steph, just immediately live betting the other team to win that quarter, and then they would. Like, you can pinpoint certain things where, like, some of these dudes are just that fucking good. Or that bad. Yeah, I mean, this... the Mavs used to be the same way. Like Luca come out, like you know the other team going on the run. Bro, not even not even Luca. Maxi Kleber. <laughs> like when Maxi Kleber's out the game, the other team making a run. As soon as he you hype he about to come back. He came, yeah, he came back yesterday. And it's like yeah. but oh, okay. but bro, last last playoff series, bro. We were trying to survive Maxi Kleber bench minutes. That's <laughs> a wild <laughs> statement. A thousand percent true though. Like, we whether it's this episode or another one, we need to talk about Mavs fans talking about Cleaver like he's the Kembe Matumbo. No, no, no. Okay. Okay, that no. All right. We could you wild him. Yeah, nah, no, yeah. No, no, no. You gotta I'm stop. No, you gotta stop. I agree. No, no, no. I'll stop. We can have it next week. But <laughs> no, because I'm on your side. He's a phenomenal playoff big. He he's Kavan Looney with a jump shot. Phenomenal. Y'all talking about him like he's a rim protector. Like, bro, like, it's not. No, bro. If you look at his weak side rim protection, like, he's up there. No. Am I going to put him about on him rotating shot? and playing help defense, not not stopping somebody from scoring that's in front of him? Correct. I agree. Kleber Correct. is a phenomenal defender. Most importantly, he's a phenomenal playoff defender. Mavs fans acting like it's going to solve all the defensive issues when this no. is, like, literally. Oh, no, crazy. yeah. I mean, it, I've been it, with you this whole time. I, I I agree that they need to stop talking about him like that. But, but I want really, I want to talk but about, it's about it. Right. He can play, can he play? He's the perfect player to play next to Wood. So you need Pauls, you need Wood offensively, but you need a a weak side rim somebody that can come and help weak side. And that's what Cleaver does, which would allow us to theoretically play Wood more. That's really why they're excited. But go ahead, Lark, we can move. On. Now, I just wanted up. to ask you about the tweet that you put out about Jalen Brunson. All right. And, and what so, led to that tweet? Is it was it the way the Mavs are playing without him, or was it what his impact in New York? 
N neither. It was every time I write an article on Mavs Moneyball, there's dickheads in the comments fucking asking me, am I ready to walk back my Jalen Brunson take? Which they didn't even understand my Jalen Brunson take. My take was, once it got to the point where we had to re-sign him when he could walk, I felt like, well, we have to re-sign him because we can't let him walk out the door. My thing was, I felt like we should have traded him before it got to that point because I thought once he signed, I didn't think that he'd be worth 30 plus million. And Mavs fans thought, hey, he can be the centerpiece of a trade that nuts us a true co-star for Luke. And I said, I don't know if he'll have enough value on that big a deal so where he can be the center. Because it's like R.J. Barrett. Can R.J. Barrett be the centerpiece of a, of a deal for a star? No, look, Utah didn't even want him for fucking Donovan Mitchell. No, right? apparently they did. Maybe. But well, yeah, but we're not going to focus. But the point, but the point is saying, saying, yeah. I thought he would be a net neutral, maybe a slight positive. But it's like, yo, Jalen and two firsts is going to net you like a true star. I didn't think you'd have that much value. But um, he's playing. I don't think he's, I still don't think he's worth a max. But then again, I don't think a lot of players are. I just think he's good enough to where a team can talk themselves into, hey, we can trade for him. We can build around him. You know what I'm saying? And he would have had value on the deal he's on now. I didn't think would he would. Would that team be Atlanta? Possibly. Speaking of, speaking of Atlanta, which at, does Quinn Snyder fix everything? Fix Yo, Trey Young, oh. Trey Young is going to get him fired again. Trey Young is a cancer. And that's time you admit it, Lurk. Like, bro, <laughs> for real. Like, bro, Trey Young is so fuck. We we gotta have an honest discussion about Trey. He's an empty stat merchant, bro. Like, I I can't stand watching him play. He's such a his teammates can't stand watching him play. His coaches can't stand watching him play. Bro, even so though who's going go first? Bro, even when I'm in the fucking when I'm in the arena live, you can hear the groans <laughs> from the fans when he chucks up some bullshit. It's like, yo, Trey, not right now, son. Do that when we up 10. This is a two point game. Yeah. Maybe don't chuck from fucking half court. Maybe don't. Yeah. What's the What's the difference between Trey Young and Jordan Poole usage? I think they're the same fucking player. No defense. They're both stupid. Bad shot selection. Oh yeah, yeah. So who's gone first out of Atlanta? Quinn Snyder or Trey Young? Trey. I think Trey's gone. Uh, I think Trey's gone this summer. I'm bro. I, I, he requested I said Trey, it or they just get rid of him. Trey for Brunson. Trey to New York. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Trey for Brunson. I think I think that's the deal that happened. I want in Brunson a couple first for Trey. Yeah, some I salary think, filler. Yeah. Maybe like I think one I think of them that makes Atlanta better. State. I think that makes Atlanta better, honestly, truthfully. Yo, is this something that you know, or this is just like where where's this coming from? I just think it makes sense. Like, but is it is it CAA though? I don't know. I think. But I, I I think New York cares more about star than production. You know what I mean? And, like, Trey is a bigger star than Jalen Brunson. Like, you can't really deny that. I think Brunson – honestly, I think – Yeah, Brunson but Brunson, Brunson – Brunson actually plays defense. Like, he's a little dude, yeah. but he actually plays defense. Yo, he Brunson brings, is – let's just say it. Brunson is better than Trey. More, like, Brunson's better. He brings, Brunson's better. He brings Brunson's more better. to the table, like, than just, like, shooting and scoring. Say he's better. Look, I want to hear you say that Brunson is better than Trey. Say it. Yo, so yeah, I think the Lakers is gonna make. Yo, no, 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 no. X. Let's not let him off the hook. You yeah, want to no, talk no. about someone that was dead wrong about somebody? I uh, specifically, Jalen Brunson. Both, both of y'all were dead wrong about. I like this tweet earlier because you yeah. was wrong too. You need one of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I admit I was wrong, Jalen Brunson. <laughs> you my guy now. Is he yeah, better baby. than Trey? Answer the question. Yes, he's a better basketball player than Trey Young. Yeah, Yo, so when Zag, he's not a more talented, though. he's not a more talented player, but he's a better player. What does that mean, though? That's such a cop. Like, he's not that I, like that's such a what does that mean? cop out. My son learned cop and please have you. Son. Like, <laughs> like Trey's more skilled. Like Trey, Trey is How? better. At, like he's a better. <laughs> what scorer. is he more skilled at? He's a better shooter. He's a better scorer. He got better. Is he a better energy. shooter? Is he a better shooter? Can Trey shoot? Can Trey shoot? I, I, bro, I hear Trey's the next step all the time. Bro, shooting like 34% from three. He league average. 
That go back to what X said earlier. His shot selection is horrendous. And go back so to what Steph. Steph earlier. You called him stupid earlier. No, he is. Bro, so is Steph. Steph, Steph, not, but, Steph but Steph is the most elite shooter of all time, though. I'm just saying, you want to call somebody the next Steph, stay some shooter. No, that wasn't me that said that. You represent other people's comments. But he's still shooting league average. Like, if he was shooting, like, Clay, No, no, Clay's, I agree with you. He Clay's is. not Steph, and he's still shooting 40%. Nah, Jalen Brunson is better. Yeah, he is. I don't know what more skilled means. I don't know. What, I don't know what he's more skilled. Right, well, we're not gonna stay on this topic for the next twenty. Oh, we, I know we're not because you're ready so, to move on. He can see it already. He I've been kind of to Jacob. Put it on the. You know, Lurk had Lurk had the Knicks under. He was talking about burn down MSG. <laughs> I still I still want them to trade everything that's not nailed down. Nah, I can't. Nah, they. I, I'm. I'm. I'm sold that we're a really good middle of the pack team. Like we, there's nowhere close to a championship, but I'm sold on continuing to move forward instead of trying to do what I wanted, which was tank. Like I say, I, fuck it, yeah, just keep doing what you're doing and get that third star. I think y'all are. I'm also, because... I'm also out on. I'm, I'm wait, not... wait, wait. I can't let you get away with that either. Who's the second? Brunson. Well, when I say star, I, you know what I mean. Like, Oh, like, no, like, now, like, you you building around Julius and Jalen right now is what I mean. Like you go and get a third person who would who should hopefully be the number one. R- Randall's then, the one. But what I'm saying, you go out and get somebody that's good enough to take over the one, and Randall and Brunson is your your two A and two B. Uh, yeah. uh, and I think when RJ's deal kicks in this summer, because I believe RJ and like pools deals both kick in this summer. I think those are going to be the two biggest trade pieces on the market. So, I mean, I think y'all are be able to get whoever you want. I don't know who that pool. is. But... I'll go after pool. Uh, no, I didn't mean like straight up. I'll pass on fucking RJ Barrett. I meant, like, I meant like if another star becomes available, like if Carl Anthony Towns or someone like that becomes available, I think I don't think there's a better piece than RJ Barrett that'll be on the market for him. I didn't mean trade RJ for Jordan Poole. I'm saying like, like a Beal, yeah, Beal. No, no, no. No, I listen. I'm with you. No, or Jimmy. No. What about Jimmy? Nah. No. No. Nah. No. You. Nah. You're not gonna do that. No, Jimmy. 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 Jimmy is already at that. Jimmy is at that point in his career where. He's destined to, if he comes to the Knicks, he's going to be like every other over-the-hill dude that is just chilling in the trainer's room more than he's on the court. All right, fuck it. Revenge game, Kyrie. Put him across the city I, you from know I'm with, I'm, You know I'm with that. I, I know you are. You've been listening <laughs> to Kanye. <laughs> I, I was listening to... Um, <laughs> I was he, listening to. He'd be in the house talking about all the life. Don't even say that. Don't off. even finish the sentence. Bro. I was listening to college <laughs> dropout <laughs> earlier. It. I'm scared of what's next, bro. <laughs> you don't fuck with college dropout? No, bro, I, I went to college. college. Damn, I'm niggas graduate. I went graduate. to college. Start judging, that's crazy. I do. That's crazy. Motherfuckers think Kanye's smart. That's that's. that's I a, never, I never said all that. Yeah, I think he's an idiot. But <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean Kyrie, Cat. I can't think. Levine. I don't hate Levine. No. Nah. Levine's better than Barry. It is it, Barry's gonna be more available. Is he? Yeah. Is he? Yeah. Uh, how many games Barry missed this year? I don't know. But it's not good much. Amount. And it was he had he had a to- he had a tear in his finger like. And band aids don't it. exist? That was it. I see hot. Yeah. He's Canadian though, bro. So is Wiggins. I'm gonna keep my comments to myself. I almost walked <laughs> out just now. I just almost walked out. <laughs> you were talking about some stuff in the group chat earlier. And yeah, I, nah, I pray, prayers up to Andrew level. Wiggins and his yeah, prayers up to Andrew Wiggins and his family, man. I hope they all good. Yeah, so before we move on from basketball, Lakers instantly look better without Russ. But now, Braun is out for at least the next couple of weeks. I don't know what's going on with AD. I know they say he's missing the next game because of his foot. I don't know how serious that is. But they won. Like, AD. They won. That, I, I was about to say, you know, X is going to have fun with that one. But <laughs> um, do the Lakers still have a chance of making the play in the playoffs? 
Yeah. Yeah, because I think the Thunder, even with Brown expected to be out the next couple of weeks. Bro, I, I, think the, I honestly think the Western Conference final is gonna be Warriors Lakers. I think we're gonna get the matchup we thought we were gonna get last year. It, but it's just I don't think both make it that far. The Lakers are the question mark because we good in the West, personally. But, <laughs> so, Yo, we go and name this episode We Good in the West. We, we, we so good in the West is crazy. <laughs> I'm from the West side, so that don't bother me at all. But it's just like the fact that you said it that many times. Bro, we good in the West. Bro, the West yeah, I'm going to change my stance. I think the Lakers don't make it. They won tonight. You don't think they no. make it to the play? No. Oh, you looking at the standings? I'm looking at this. I thought for some reason I thought they were 10th. But nah, um, they like 12, aren't they? No, 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 no. Go look at but like go look at their schedule though. <laughs> yeah, like, don't but, just... but D-Lo's out with a sprained ankle. Don't know how many games Anthony Davis is gonna play, and you don't know when Braun's gonna come back. He's gonna get reevaluated in a couple weeks. So so AD's not gonna play back to backs, which they don't play a back to back until April. Okay. <laughs> so it's AD and Jared Vanderbilt. And yeah, so I mean like so, so essentially, play, what so what team do you think falls out? Minnesota, Utah, or New Orleans? Out the plan? Minnesota. All, but honestly, it could be all of the above. <laughs> Minnesota, Utah. Utah, Utah definitely falls out. You so. Utah, Utah definitely like gets close. If the if the Pelicans lose today, they're tied with the Lakers. Yeah. Like I and I honestly, bro, like, like I mean this wholeheartedly. But I I'm think the, I think the Trailblazers are getting in too. Still though, yeah. That, 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 I think that, that, they, I think Dame is still gonna get them into the top ten at a, at least a five hundred record. That's fine. Um, I mean this wholeheartedly, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful because I've been like on team like don't cheat the process. Like I hate when people are like just get in and you'll figure it out. Brother, what? Like, yeah. I mean that is the West though. Like if you just get in in the West. It's like realistically, let, let's say they get the eight seed, like the worst possible seed possible. Are you telling me like they can't? They the can't. They're gonna it? smoke their fucking boots. Gentlemen sweep. I, I mean, sweep. I hope you're right. I I hope you're right. Because for the same reason, like a part of me hopes the Warriors lose. You shouldn't be able to cheat the process the way the Warriors and Lakers have this year. But like, I feel like the Lakers get the eight seed. I think they could beat Denver, and then I believe they like. I mean, Kings or Phoenix or Dallas, like, as long as they avoid the Warriors, like, I don't think there's anyone that really could beat them. Memphis would probably dog them. As much as I don't like Memphis, Memphis would probably dog them. But Jaren yeah, Jackson in the paint? Have... Yeah, I don't Jaren know. Jackson, I'm with... Jaren probably... Jackson is Anthony Davis with a felony teammate. It's the same player. There's no way they can keep jobs in paint, bro. <laughs> no Jago keep himself out the paint. You know, yo, yo. We don't even know if he's gonna be available for the series. Like, <laughs> yo, what y'all think, go, what y'all Paul, think about Paul, that John Paul, Jones, Paul. Tommy Fury fight? Jake Paul, Tommy Fury. That's what I meant. This guy. <laughs> Yo, yo, you fucked my whole head up with yo, the whole yo, uh, Jack, uh, Hold, Jack, hold up, hold Anthony up your Davis mason jar player. for me. Hold huh? up your mason jar for me. Yeah, for for all our listeners out there, that's full of tequila. (laughs) This is a staple of the show. Moving, yeah, that shit's full of tequila. So if you wonder how you got Jake Paul and John Jones mixed up, it's that Mason shot right there. (laughs) And like, yo, that's bottom shelf tequila. You know, that's not even like that. Don't that ain't coming like a nice glass container? Like, nah, that shit come in a fucking. It came in a plastic bottle. It came in a plastic bottle. (laughs) No, it comes in a franzi a wine bag. He slapped the shit in there. He opened the 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 What do you think? I went to the to the little market and got the two dollar shots. Bam! That ain't that ain't that posado. I know that. I I think he went downstairs and asked doorman what he has left, (laughs) and that's the bottle. (laughs) That's some shit that they made in Rikers that that your homie down the block is selling. Posado, pendejito. Yo, fam. I used to pull that trip with the bitches too. Keep the yeah. <laughs> and pour the bullshit in there. Like I know what I know the scheme you're running. Come on, son. You know that shit don't smell like fucking terrible. Yeah, Come he's on. had that bottle for 20 years, been Bro, pouring new it's tequila. The same bottle. Yo, yo. And, his, look, and that's the bottle for the clear one. 
keep drinking the brown one. That's how I know. Like, nah, no, it's clear. Not. It clearly said Reposado in there. You're bug. <laughs> bro, the Reposado label is brown, bro. This is your son. Like, think oh, he's stupid, bro. Yo, this man right here. Yeah, that's how he keep the hoes, you know what I'm saying? Just confused, dazed and confused. <laughs> They like, oh, this is nice. And he's like, yo, I spent four dollars on this, man. They have no idea. <laughs> you know, hey, I respect the game, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yo, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. Yo, but I wish I, <laughs> I wish used to be pouring. Me. I used to be pouring I black into a bottle of Grey Goose. Like your mom <laughs> here, take that. They're like, ooh, I, Grey Goose is my favorite. Huh? I bet it is, bitch. I- I was the king if you pull up to the party with the water bottle of like vodka, and then anyone asks what it is, you just say top shelf. It don't matter. Yeah, they, they, don't <laughs> they know notice you're like, yeah, you just wrong. You're drunk. <laughs> Yo. Yo, so what'd you think of the Jake Paul Tommy Fury fight? I'm glad he lost. Fucking. Yeah, I I'm not gonna lie. Good. I was impressed. He impressed me. Yeah. They're both better than I thought. I, I got to get Tom. I feel like we did we talk uh, we talked about it on here like a week or two ago, and I trashed Tommy Fury. I was wrong. He's pretty good. He's not bad. Yo, they they were not both bad. they were both. He's a he's a decent boxer. He got a lot he needs to work on. You could Jake tell he has it, huh? Both. Well, I was talking about I was talking about Tommy just now, but but um, both of them actually, but. Tommy, you you could tell he got like that pox and pedigree in him, but he's got a long way to go. He got potential, but he got a long way to go. Jake fucking impressed me late. With this yeah. fight right here, Jake convinced me that he could be he could actually have a boxing career. He he's could have a, a boxing kid. career, bro. He's a tough kid. Yo, he could have a boxing career. He showed me he could take a fucking punch, bro. Man, he, Yo, he if he learns how too. to, if he improves his defense, my bad. But if he improves his defense, and he learns how to stop swinging so wild that times, like every time he tries to throw a combo, so so pretty much if he learns how to like the, yeah. But I mean, but look at Deontay Wilder. But like, look at Deontay Wilder. Not throw punches wildly. No, but look, I'm not saying he's gonna be a world class boxer. I'm not saying he's gonna go undefeated after this. But he showed he could take a hit. He got a strong chin. And if he can continue to improve, because if you if you go back to his first fight to now, like he looks like a totally different fighter. And this is the first time he actually fought somebody that's a boxer, not just like some MMA fighter that's a striker, at least to my knowledge. Yeah, it is. So like to see the difference in his improvement in that, and then to face somebody that like, like, like this is Tyson Fury little brother, bro. Like he got like he's he's training with elite people. He's boxing with people like he's training and being coached by people that been in the game forever. He has amateur boxing background. Only he's shit Jake been doing boxing wise we see on fucking on the internet. He Tommy was much bigger too. That was like my biggest takeaway. Like Tommy looked like a guy that cut from like two fifteen to one eighty three. And Jake looked like a guy that cut from 187, 188 to 183. Like, he, Tommy was bigger. Uh, you know, if, if Jake learned how to fucking block properly and weave at the same time, like... I mean, I, so he he's seven fights in now. I, I think for a guy that has seven fights and, like, I mean, I'll be honest, bro. Like, I'm not, like, the, the biggest boxing fan, but, like, I can't imagine anyone with seven pro fights and zero amateur fights is going to look much better than he did. I, it, where he impressed me, the counter left that he land he landed a counter left in the third round and the fourth round that backed Tommy up both times. And I thought he was a one trick pony, but I thought the one trick was you know Deontay Wilder is a one trick pony too. Yeah. And I thought the overhand right was his only trick. I didn't really think he had defense. And bro, he Tommy yeah, with jab he slipped it and and he landed a left. And I said, oh, this kid. Now this kid can punch. Like he can't box, but he can punch. I actually had him winning the round. I mean, winning the fight. I thought well, he won the fight. Let me be real. His brother is the more paid Yo. impressive Paul brother. Yo, his, his brother, brother was not, but his brother was wilding, bro. Logan. Logan. Yo. You know about his oh, no. Logan is an elite fucking wrestler. 
Oh, I yeah, want to hate him. Okay, okay. Bro, he's fucking tra- a tremendous. Yeah, he's mad wrestler. athletic. But Dion, Bro, yeah, Dion. they're both crazy athletes, in my opinion. That Bro. was my takeaway from Sunday. They're both nutty athletes. But I thought you were going to say Logan's a better boxer. It, I was going to bet you to crib on KSI Jake Paul if you really believe that. And you would have took who, KSI? I got Jake Paul, bro. I think Jake knocks. Oh, no, no, I, no, I'm, KSI yeah, put yeah. down Logan, right? Yeah, KSI put down Logan. That's why. I, that's and why I wanted him to be on the side. Logan's better than Jake because I. And I give no, and I give credit to him because he fought <laughs> Floyd. You know what I'm saying? Like, granted, Floyd was playing with him, but you know what I'm saying? Like that. At least he was in there with some like an elite fucking boxer. So I give Logan is credit. seventy pounds heavier than Floyd. Yeah. Of course, he stood in there with Floyd. That shit would be like, bro. But even that's still, like, bro, that's like. Nah, hey, bro, that's still. that's like me. That's like me and you fighting. Yeah. I'd hope my punches feel like pillows. You two thirty. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like that doesn't mean I didn't land one clean. That just means I'm half your size. Like, yeah. It's just not. I don't know. It's not the same. If Jake and Floyd fought, that's different. But what, what I don't do you know, think my... about Logan Paul's comments and how he started calling the whole Fury family pussy? I was gonna say I thought Jake. So I think Jake wins the rematch for a variety of reasons. If we get into talking about that, we, uh, I'll explain it. Jake wins this fight if Logan doesn't say a word. That, so this, this is the difference of like Jake Paul and a boxer. Jake Paul was there to put on a show, right? He's a showman. And you kind of see that in the first round where he like dances around, kind of lets Tommy do his he thing. He was doing he, that shit the whole fucking fight and was getting stuffed every time. But then the second round, you could see Jake turn turning up. And I thought the second round, I had Jake winning the second round, but if you told me you had Tommy, I agree. I had that. Tommy win the second, but I had Jake win the first. I had those flip. Jake dogged him the third round. Wasn't close. I got in my Jake opinion. the third. But Jake was turning up. Like that was gonna like this was the turning point of the fight. Then Logan opened up his mouth at the end of the third, and bro, Tommy put it on him. I'm in the fourth. Tommy put it on him in the fourth. I, I feel like if Jake doesn't lose that point in the fifth round, he wins this fight. Nah, because I think both were 10-8. I because I, Tommy lost one in the sixth, and I thought both won the round that they lost the point. So like I thought both rounds were 10-8. I thought Jake won. Really? The fight I thought Jake was winning that round in the sixth anyway. So no, so I think Jake won the sixth round and Tommy won the, the fifth round. So you could do nine, nine or ten, eight. It doesn't like what I'm saying is both evened out. Like I don't think anyone got screwed by losing a point. Okay. Um I thought Jake won the fight because I gave him two, three, and then you can split it or give it to him at five, six, and then he knocked him down in the eighth. And unfortunately in boxing, if you get a knockdown, that's a 10-8. All right, it doesn't really matter what it looks like. So in my opinion, Jake won on points. And like my takeaway was. Jake should have won the fight, but the more impressive rounds was by far Tommy Fury, bro. Like, it wasn't... When Tommy Fury won a round, you couldn't even argue that Jake won. Yeah, when could, Jake won a round, you could make the argument that Tommy run it. He started putting on the boxing mask. He was hitting him with some combinations, bro. Tommy? Yeah, yeah. Tommy was hitting Jake with some combinations. Like, he has a stiff jab. It was... It was, big, it was big. That, but that this fight was way more entertaining than I expected it to be. Like, as far as, like, an actual boxing match and not just, like, another Jake Paul putting on a show in a ring match. This was... It, this actually felt like I watched a boxing match. It I was, don't give him that. It, I, it, 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 it was, it was like, like a boxing match. match but he, he's it, it legit. Like actual like, boxing match, like... He, so, there's a middle ground, right? Like, there, there's what people say where it's, like, he's not a boxer. That's not true. I disagree. When Jake, but when Jake says, I'm going to be a world champion, that's also not true. <laughs> but, like, but Jake... He, he but, has put in the work. To yeah. I won't say credible because he can't step in with a credible top twenty heavyweight, right? But right. credible in that is not a fucking circus show; it's an actual fight. You know what I'm saying? And for that, I'll I'll give he's put the work in to at least make it an actual fight. It, I don't feel like I'm watching fucking rough and rowdy when Bar yeah. still puts on an event. So for I, that, I give him credit. I will say though, like the ref took a lot of shit in my opinion. I mean that ref, uh, refs like. Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, Canelo. You can't go from refing the highest of the high levels to refing two dudes who had a combined record going into the fight of 14 and up. Like, I know Jake puts himself on a pedestal. And I mean, I fuck with Jake. So, like, I know I do too. And the fans do also. 
But the reality is the kid has six fights. And Tommy Fury, I know he's fighting Jake in a main event. And now he's 9-0, and he's probably never not going to fight a main event ever again. But his reality is he's 9-0. He doesn't have experience. Jake doesn't have experience. They're 23 and 24 years old. You can't put a championship-level ref in there. The ref did everything correctly. It's just unfortunate that these two didn't know what to do in those situations, in my yeah. opinion. So how long before they fight again? Because if I'm not mistaken, I was reading that Jake Paul had um a stipulation in the in the contract that if he loses he's guaranteed a rematch yeah i i think they fight in may or june and i think jake dogs him like if I, they I, go cinco de mayo weekend in vegas will be fucking fire canelo has yeah. that oh block. yeah, no, yeah, yeah canelo. bro canelo yeah. has that one blocked out until he gets out he doesn't want <laughs> Canelo could be eighty three in a wheelchair. Ever since your boy Cotto stopped taking, ever since your bo- Cotto st- uh, stopped taking those weekends, it was over. Like yeah. Canelo whooped his ass on Cinco de Mayo and then took over Cinco. Yo, de relax, Mayo. relax, bro, <laughs> relax, relax. But I, let's relax on Cotto. He's a legend. <laughs> They'll the fight in the summer, and Jake's gonna put him on him, bro. It, it's one thing to train for a fight. And this is this is really why Jake earned my respect. Everything you guys said, but this is really why. It's one thing to train for a fight where you don't when you don't have anything, right? All your money is your brother's money and fucking Love Island, and that shit's gonna, <laughs> bro, that shit's gonna wash away eventually. Jake gave him generational wealth. What what did Connor call it? Red panty night when you fight him because you're you're good for life. Tommy's good for life now. It, I do not believe he's gonna give a fuck for the second one maybe he gives a fuck for the third one because he has more motivation because i do believe it'll be a trilogy but like this second one bro like we've seen in the last three years a kid in jake who has generational wealth already is willing to sacrifice everything and put everything on the line and although he probably made 40 50 m's on sunday it's really not about the money for him it's about like the pride and the sport i don't believe that about tommy so like i i think but- Jake but see, the thing is, him. boxing boxing is so, like, corrupt that it's, like, if Tommy can legitimately use this as a stepping stone to, like, launch a career, they'll put him in with enough fucking tomato cans to where Fury can actually, like, fucking develop some sort of fucking legitimate, you know what I'm saying? So no. there's this incentive for him because, like, yo, bro, well, I mean, if you this into three or four big money fights to where you're the headliner, you're getting the fucking lion's share of the fucking purse, and but- it's, like... No. Well, what I'm saying is, I think he will get that. That's typically yeah, like these rematch clauses. These rematch clauses typically go from like it flips. Like Tyson yeah. Fury and Deontay Wilder, for example, they split it 50 50. Tyson won the first one. They said, nah, now it's going to be 60 40 if you want to run it back. So, like, he probably made 20 M's on Sunday himself, right? Like, generational wealth. He's going to make 50 60 for the second one, guaranteed, before he ever steps in the ring. I don't think this dude's like he hasn't proven to me that he's willing to to train and sacrifice everything with knowing he's going to make that much money. So it's like Jake Paul's basically going to make him a hundred millionaire in a six month span with all due respect to Tommy Fury, who I think is much better than I thought he was a week ago. I don't, bro, I don't think he's ever fighting again. Like after this Jake Paul trilogy is over, like bro, bro's going to be on YouTube for the rest of his life. I wouldn't fight if I was him either. I don't know, man. I, bro, I'd honestly, boxers, I would lose. I would lose on purpose. Boxers, I'm losing on purpose. That happened with a real boxer. The dude that knocked out Deontay Wild, no, the British guy, Andy Ruiz, those short, fat Mexican yeah. dude. He knocked out the British heavyweight Josh champion in the AJ. world. Anthony yeah, Joshua. and and he never stepped foot in the gym another day in his fucking life up until recently. It yeah. took five or six fights. For him to actually start training again, bro, he showed up at the rematch heavier than he did to the original fight, which he took on like two weeks' notice. Why? And he said, I got money. I never had money before. I was in Mexico wilding, partying, buying shit, taking care of my peoples. He was like, I didn't have any motivation to go in the gym because I didn't have the hunger anymore. So if that could ha- happen with a professional, it could definitely happen to somebody who wasn't guaranteed to have a legitimate career. So I, I feel you. I understand where you're coming from. Mar- Marcos Maidana. Ain't fought since he fought Floyd. Why? Why would he ever fight again? Conor McGregor, he fights ever since the Floyd fight, but has Conor ever looked like like a guy that felt like he had, like, if he lost, it mattered? It was for a paycheck. 
because he fucking snorts cocaine every night. Like and he knew that his his mouth could sell any fight. So any, he's like, it doesn't matter if I win. I right. can just talk you into purchasing my next one. Right. You know what I'm saying? So once you get that big payday and, and your bank account has a couple extra commas, like I just don't believe you can get up again. And I'm not saying like like if Tommy Fury gets knocked out by Jake, I think he gets up for the third fight. But in the specific second one, I think Jake puts it on him just because Jake's gonna care a lot more. And they're that close too as fighters. So, John Jones returns to the cage, going up against what's his name, Cyril Gane Gane, the French dude. I don't know how to pronounce the last name. Either one sounds good to me. Though. Either either one's gonna get knocked out. I don't know, bro. He's he's a problem, bro. Bro, Have John Jones John? is the greatest MMA fighter. You're right of our lifetime. This is his first fight in over three years. Have y'all seen John lately? Look overweight. I mean, he's yeah, a heavyweight. He's, he's more. Jacob. And that's another thing. This is his first time fighting in the heavyweight division. This is his first fight in three years. He doesn't look like he's in the like great shape. Bro, he can kick you from another room, bro. That's what right. matters. Yeah. You're yeah. not gonna get close enough to him to actually land some shit. Like all, all that shit can be fine. Jacob, clip this shit. That boy's on all the fucking roids. And he and he's testing off of it right now because he's about to get tested in the next day or two. He was on all of the roids to get up to his weight. He looks fat. He looks like a dude that just got off steroids. It's insane. He's about to go, he's about to go in there like he was probably juiced to the gills two months ago. And he's about to go in there as if nothing happened. Like I, don't cheat the process. I hope other bro wins. I'm gonna bet on John. Bro, he was high on cocaine while he was fighting Daniel Cormier. And Daniel Cormier is a Hall of Fame fighter. And he was toying with fucking Cormier. You know what I'm saying? Was again also on all the roids for that fight. <laughs> like <laughs> roids, coke, whatever. Like he was Bro, he he was doing cocaine and steroids at 3 a.m. Inject me with something. I'm gonna snort the other thing while you inject me. It was insane That's what bro was doing. Cormier and his wasn't hurting him. He didn't bro, he, shits. Yeah, I, I don't fuck with John, but I do think he wins. Uh, just because also I like watched uh the way in Ganu threw uh, Ciro Gane around, bro. I just can't imagine that John wouldn't do the same bro, thing. He was wilding. And John, like, John's just not letting him close, crazy. bro. Like, the only way you could get to John is if you can get him to the ground, but he's too good at evading takedown. So it's like, at that point, you think you're going to outbox him? Can you really say that that's the way to win against him when, like, he's dominated so many people on the ground? But but what I'm saying is, you're not going to stand toe-to-toe with him. Yeah, but that's that's a I think he got too. a better chance. But see, that's the thing, though. This dude is, he's won by, he's either won by knockout or submission to every fight. Yeah. He's the greatest ever made fighter of our lifetime. I'm talking about John Jones. I'm talking about his opponent. Oh, so, yeah, but. Now. No, no, no. He had, he had, the Ciro Gane has no ground game. Yeah. Zero. You like, say he, that, but he's won by submission multiple times and he no. has a background in jujitsu. Now, Ben, right. you're talking about John Jones. I'm not trying to compare the two. No, I understand. So, so I've watched this dude's. I've watched this dude come up. He hasn't fought anybody, and his submission wins. The dude is knocked out cold, and like he takes him to the ground and taps him out, uh, like makes him submit. Essentially, he's not dominating you on the ground and locking you in like an armbar or, or a rear naked choke. Like, bro, Francis had a torn ACL and MCL, and said, "I cannot stand on this leg for longer than a minute at a time." So he would stand with this kid, Gane, and when they hit about the four-minute mark of a round, he would pick him up and put him on the ground every time. Dominated the fight, bro. And Francis, mind you, a year prior, fought Stipe, and Stipe said, I'm not going to stand with you. I'm going to pick you up and put you on the ground. So, like, John is 10 times the wrestler that Francis or Stipe is. And if Francis did that to Cyril Gane, like, I can't imagine John wouldn't do the same thing. It's gonna I, I, I think John wins a wrestling match against pretty much anybody in the UFC. My, uh, question, is, my question is, well, we talk about... Have you heard Kobe Covington tell the stories about the two of them in college? Huh? Have you heard Kobe Covington tell the stories about the two of them in college? Nah, but John wasn't roided up and on coke in college, I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> Bro, John was hiding underneath... Uh, Underneath gym mats when the NCAA would come in. That boy been on he been on Royd since look at his brothers. They all on it. 
That's a, it's a family business. Beyond about to get an investigation launched into the NFL and the UFC. They let Chandler um, get away with it. And we know they let John get away with it. But no, they John, been letting John get away with murder for years. Like but John like, fought crazy. John fought DC DC Saturday night, Sunday afternoon, tested positive for Roy. Do you tell me you didn't have that test Saturday night? <laughs> you tell me the results didn't come back the day before, bro. They let John get away with murder. It's usually some he do some stupid ass shit, and they're like, you know what? We're gonna have to punish you. Now we're gonna blow your spot. You made us our money. We don't need you at this very moment. If uh, UFC 200, if Anderson Silva didn't say he'll fight Daniel Cormier, we never find out John test positive uh, the day before that fight. They would. There's no way we would have found out the day after. Yeah, because he stepped in as the backup at the last minute. You see, Anderson, so already, what's crazy is that they have a backup for John Jones for this fight already. Yeah. Sergey, I don't know his last name, to be honest. Like, it's, it's, it's fucking crazy, like, that you're that unreliable that they got to have backups for you on standby. Like, hey, bro, he ain't even got to make weight. It's not like he has to cut weight. He just got to show up and be clean. Oh, yeah, but my whole shit is, do you think like in his in in his first fight as a ever like he's stepping up in a weight class? This is this is still a different game for him, and he hasn't been in the cage in three years. Yeah, I think he'll be fine. Oh. I I think the reason he took three years oh. off is because he was doing all the steroids, <laughs> like all of them. <laughs> at, at least Connor said. At least when they asked Connor, like, yo, why why ain't you being tested by USADA in 14 months? He said, I'm on the roids. <laughs> he just said it. He said, bro, I wanted my leg to heal quicker and heal better. So I took steroids. That was that. It's it's a fair, it's a fair comment. Like it made sense the way he said it. He's like, I want to be able to walk at my kid's graduation, and this steroid gave me a better chance to do that. You're not gonna tell me I'm not gonna do that. John Jones been on steroids for three years. He needed to wait off of him. He's a bitch. So, before we put in our bets this week, just want to point out the fact that that marketing bet hit last week. Yo, yo, hit with ease. Hit with ease. Shot, yo, he dropped 40 on him? Yeah, it was ease. Yo, it was crazy, like. I'm sitting here trying to backpedal you like, nah, fuck yeah. out of here. Yeah, what we should have done, <laughs> we should have spliced Dion laughing and talking about he would have took every under and just put every Laurie bucket in the background <laughs> as Dion yeah. had a voiceover talking shit. Oh, it man, that was tremendous. Yeah, it was it's crazy. So It'd be like that sometimes. He got lucky. This week, <laughs> he did. This week, I go first. Then who is it? You right, Dion? Nah, no, it's oh, it's Yes, sir. I don't know, cause y'all both went three and two, but Dion had better odds than you. I went two and three. It's X. I I did the quick math in my head. It's X. I'm looking at it right now, and it's should... wait. Am I looking it, at it? It's X. Wait, no. It's X. Yeah, make your pick, bro. Make make wrong pick. one, bro. My bad. Just make so anyway, so we're gonna start with the basketball. We all pick one bat um one. There's only three games for the Thursday, so we're gonna pick for each one. Right. I'm gonna go Kawhi Leonard over a half a block. He just has to get one block in the game at plus one fifteen against the Warriors tomorrow. Plus one fifteen. Yeah. Is it beat out tomorrow? They oh. played today, right? Yeah, he's probably questionable. But there's he's four, he's there's four, four games tomorrow. What is he talking games. about? Hmm. Uh, give me, give me Pacers Man, minus my four. Bad four. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I'm taking that same bet. Pacers minus four is the easiest. <laughs> That's the easiest bet on the on the. Are we choosing all four or just three of the four? Yeah, we choose. Oh, you want to just choose three then? No, I'm asking. No, let's do all four. All right, yeah, Pacers minus four. All 
I'm gonna take the over on that, the over over two thirty eight and a half. All right. Give me the Raptors minus one. Yeah, uh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that Dion stench on my picks. Go ahead, Lord. <laughs> Yeah, those are two easy ass bets. Like I put those in an hour ago. <laughs> give me, give me the Mavericks minus three and a half at home against the Sixers. Shit, give me the Sixers money line plus one forty. Uh, give me the Warriors plus one thirty. I'm gonna take that bet too. So fuck it, give me the Clippers minus three then, just to create some separation. <laughs> uh, give me Luca over thirty and a half minus one twenty. All right, so that's all of the um basketball games, right? Yeah, I'm gonna take Man United plus one seventy five against Liverpool. I'm gonna take Tottenham plus one twenty five over Wolves. Your time is oh, garbage, so bro. Uh, give me Dortmund plus 120 against Leipzig. Give me Zubak over one and a half steals plus blocks at plus 150. How many picks are we making? Two? What are you doing? Two? Are you two outside blocks? the Indian? Yeah, it was two outside. Well, originally, we were supposed to do the two outside of that because I miscalculated how many basketball picks. So I'm just making sure. It's up to y'all. We usually, we've been doing five lately. We can do whatever y'all want. Do an extra one because of the extra NBA game. So give me, um, fuck it. Give me, um, give me Liverpool plus 145. I just want to root for your team's downfall. I'm going to do Nottingham Forest. Nottingham Forest plus 170. Serious the man can't be. Bro, (laughs) just worry about making Europa. You know what I'm saying? We we, we cooking up in Europa. Barca just got cooked. We just cooked up in the FA Cup. We just won Carabao. We chilling. All that matters is that we finish top four. Get Victor Osim Hen in the summer and dominate the world next year, like Pinky and the Green. Listen, y'all gonna get a lot more than Victor Osim in the summer. To be honest. Honestly, y'all put the fear of God in me for next season, but this season, listen, so, let's see what happens in the transfer window, especially so, when you got a great. So what are the odds, odds Dion? That, What's the odds for Jude, Arsenal? That's where Jude's going. What do you What do you give What do you give Arsenal to win the Prem? What percentage? Not the hate of Dion. The actual I, I, soccer fan. Are we doing one more pick or no? No, that's no. it. I, I think it's 50-50. I, I really do think it comes down to the last city game at the Etihad, uh, to be honest. It, it, if they can steal a draw, then, yeah, they win it. If they lose, then no. Uh, yeah. No, nah, today's I, game was huge. We needed that. I don't think this team, and they've already shown it, like they proved me right with this. Like, they are good enough to continue winning, but – the moment they lose there, they're gonna they go on losing streaks. And I just think if they lose the city, then they lose another one and it's over. I, I, to be honest, like so one of those two teams is basically gonna have to run the table. And I don't think I, I mean they both won't. So whoever comes away with that game is gonna win it all. Jesus back on the back on the training fields. I, so don't, I don't know. I mean, if he's back to city, been crying for Gabby for a while now. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how much better. If he don't, if he don't, don't much, instantly, he's our best player, bro. Like if they, if he don't instantly turn y'all into an unstoppable force, I'm gonna talk mad shit because you've been really crying your heart out for this man. Like he's bro, everybody, including your man Dion. When Gabby got hurt, said your Arsenal was fucking cooked. Put a fork in him, they're fucking done. And now that he's coming back, now I. Maybe he makes a difference. It, Maybe he gives you a good ten minutes every other game. I mean, he he got he got <laughs> hurt. He got hurt before you guys got Chosard. I like the Chosard. I've been saying Chosard and Martinelli in the lineup together with Saka like that. That's the best version of Arsenal. I I don't think Gabby coming know. back really changes that. I mean, if 
if Gabby can give you 60, 65, and then you bring Chosard on and move Martinelli to the middle, like that's great too. I don't know. It, I, I don't think it's as necessary as it was a month and a no, half. I agree. But I but I like the lineup that we have now with Chosard up the middle, Martinelli at the wing. Because, yeah. bro, because remember I had told you, like, bro, Eddie and Kedia and fucking Martinelli didn't have any passes between them for two, almost three games. Bro, Chassard and Martinelli out there fucking one, two men in it, like combo, next combination play. But anyway, I won't bore the audience, but Arsenal well, you can, for real, man. And you can the, play yo, more fluid. You and look, I'm changing fluid. my mind. I don't want the Thierry Henry jersey. I want a Mikel Arteta jersey. That's Barcelona? No, not the Barcelona. <laughs> the purple and black Arsenal. <laughs> you don't want. You don't want. You don't want the jersey from the place he calls home. No, no, no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No. You don't want you don't want his jersey. The one I he wanted, had, I the wanted one on to, his wall. I only want our tether because I believe it was you that called him Mikel's second tether or fucking. You know what I'm saying? Snitch tether. Who can get the snitch tether? Listen, you know, he, 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 our tether, our tether's okay. He's okay. He's okay. We won't bore the fans. I really, I mean, look, we don't. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna bore the viewers. Like, if City wins, I'm gonna have the same exact sentiment. The EPL is dog shit. This Yo, Dion's on the soccer show saying he don't want to bore the, the listeners talking about soccer. Well, they they might not come here to listen, but I'm just saying the EPL is dog shit this year. I really do feel that way. Like if you look at the way the EPL stands up in the European competitions, like you kind of look at it and you're like, well, no shit, City's five points back with how they've played all year. No yeah, shit, Arsenal's the one first. I was like, thinking, I was thinking, it's about really that, bad man. this year. I was thinking about it earlier. I'm like, yo, like, I realized that y'all all racist. The reason why y'all try, the reason why I was pushed towards EPL of all the soccer leagues was because it's the only one that you could catch almost all the games on the on in America with no problem. Yeah, like, it's not, it's, even, it's not even. It's not even. Um, but uh, we're listen, talking, if you're if you're ML, then yeah, it's hard to watch games if you don't have. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But if you have a basic football subscription, but I be watching. French League One games. I've been watching English Championship games on my television, bro. Well, you just gotta, you I mean, just gotta call for forty bucks a month for cable. That's it. The, you know what I'm the EPL is typically the best, league, and it probably still is the best league. I think kind of soccer worldwide is like a little bit of a step down this year. But like Tottenham and Man U have not been that good this year. Man U is very good now. I'm not gonna be disrespectful, but if you look at Man U for the, oh, no, the whole no, season, to the curb, yeah. The oh, whole can I make season, one quick comment? Huh. I'm officially, I'm an Atlanta United fan. I thought MLS was oh. dog shit, and it's and it's it is no, dog it is. shit. But they had like a pregame like celebration with fireworks and drums. It was lit, and then watching the Argentinian dude score those two goals in three minutes, bro. I, I ain't gonna lie. I tried to play cool. If Atlanta United after that, bro. I try to play cool. I was jumping up and down like a fucking schoolgirl, yeah. just set up going nuts. Yo, so and, and you, ne- never forget, like a month ago, two months ago, when I said I'm going to start like trying to fuck with the MLS because New York played right down the block from me. You was going crazy about how dog shit the MLS no, bro, I even said it to the people there. I'm like, yo, the MLS is complete <laughs> dog shit, but I'm in LA. I won't watch a second of MLS outside of Atlanta United, but. I might I might fuck around and become a season ticket holder because it's lit, man. The atmosphere yeah, is lit. You you're the only person that knows he's Argentinian. The, his national team manager has no idea that he's available to be on the roster. Yo, he's gonna get <laughs> he's going to Europe. He's not gonna last the whole season, nevertheless. He's no, going to listen. Europe. You're the only person that knows he's Argentinian. Isn't it called like Argentina? Uh, look, all I was gonna say though, I think the EPL stinks. Tottenham stinks, and they're gonna finish top four with Eve. I don't think Man U deserves to finish top four based on how they played, but they're going to do it with ease. City Wait, what, is having, can City's you... having the worst year I've seen them have under Pep, and they're literally like five points back. It's just – that's not a diss on Arsenal per se. That's just a diss on the totality of the league. I just don't think the league's that good right now. Why Why'd you say that Um, United doesn't deserve to finish top four? I, the they, same I, reason – they started off the season? The same reason I don't think the Warriors deserve to win the title, even though I do think they will. You can't cheat the process, and you just you can't be dog shit for four months and then turn it up and like all of a sudden like you're fine. Like yeah, they turned it up. They're very you good mean now. Changes, though. 
They made yeah. changes before they turned up. Yeah. No, and Ten Hawk's phenomenal. I think he's the best manager in the EPL. Bro, all they did was buy Casemiro. Yeah, they bought Casemiro. They bought Casemiro. They got rid of Ronaldo. They moved. They moved Rashford. Yeah. It was a process. No. It was a process. They I, honestly, I feel like they did the opposite of cheat the process because getting rid of Ronaldo was not the easiest decision to make. That could have blown up. I when I say cheat the process, they didn't until they got Casemiro and for the beginning of the ten, like they just didn't try. Like the lineups he was throwing out there were a joke. The formations he was running was a joke. The tactics were a joke. And then the World Cup hit, and he just magically figured it out. Like and he's then, special. He's the best. He's the best manager in the EPL. And I, I don't, I, I personally don't, know. don't think it's close. I don't know, but, bro, because like you said, like before Casemiro got there, it was different, right? And then even after they got my son Casamigos, every every game he's not playing, every time he comes off the pitch, they they look totally different. Today they started without Rashford and and Casem and Casemiro for the first half, and they played like dog shit for forty five minutes. It was disgusting. It was an ugly game, and threw in Cass at halftime. Threw in Rashford like 10, 15 minutes later, and they looked like a completely different squad with those two out there. So I don't know. Like I I fuck with I fuck with Ten Hag. But it's like, can I really sit there and say that, like, objectively say that he's the best at anything when the team plays like dog shit when one or two players aren't on the pitch? That's because the team that, is dog- that just speaks to the team being the, raised the fucking thin. Like, yeah, the team is dog shit. Look at who you're having dog. on the back line. Yeah, that, that midfield. Is the midfield. Like, no, the, the whole team's dog. Bro, listen, I don't give a fuck what Rashford does this year. I've watched him for like year. He ain't that good. Like, like, like Ten Hag, so Ten Hag all, has him balling. Ten like, uh, Ten Hag has he him balling. He's up. phenomenal at what the moment, but he, up? it's Ten Hag. It's him and Casemiro. Bruno ain't that good. Uh, uh, Whiteboard dude. stinks. Garnacho's a joke. The whole back line stinks. Gar- David Garnacho De- is like fucking 10 years old, bro. Don't care. David De Gea <laughs> plays good for three weeks and plays dog shit for four months. The team stinks. Ten Hag, the, what makes Man U scary is when they spend two to three hundred million in the summer and they get ten hawks players. He's doing this with a bunch. With, this roster is not better than Tottenham. I've been told that that he's the reason why Anthony is there. Stinks also. Anthony stinks. Yo, he that's, a, stinks. that's a dribble merchant. He stinks. I hate him. The, the the roster is not better than Tottenham's. It's not better than Liverpool's. It's probably not better than Chelsea's if we're being honest. But they have a special, special, special manager, and he's phenomenal, and it's working. I just don't like if that if a team that is as bad as Man U is top four, like that says as much to the rest of the league as it does them. It's gonna they're gonna fix it. They're gonna I, if I had to place a bet on a team to win the league next year, it's probably them. But that doesn't mean anything right now. Oh yeah. Well, I guess we could mm-hmm. up right there praising Man U. Oh, that's it for this week's episode of the Break the Bank Podcast. Tune in next week, see what's going on. <laughs> <laughs>